This is question two from paper 2-2 from Cambridge International Education, June 2020 exams. For more questions from this exam paper, there should be a link appearing up the top right of the screen right around now. And in the description below the video, there will be a link to an image of this question. So I recommend you try the question before looking at my solution. In this question, they ask us to find the stationary point, the exact coordinates. And that's important, actually, that word exact. We'll see why later on but the exact coordinates of the stationary point of this curve. Now, we don't need to know what the curve looks like to do this question. And I'll, I'll do the whole question assuming we didn't know what it looks like. But you will have access, if you're studying, to graphing um, software just on your computer or even on your phone. And if you have an expensive and fancy calculator, you'll actually have access to a graphing um, to a graph of that, even in the exam in some cases. So in this case, I will pop up on screen now what it looks like. And while that's up there, I'll also jot it down on the screen, a rough, uh, a rough drawing of what it looks like. Okay, so here's my fairly rough drawing of it. And again, you don't necessarily need that, but it is interesting to see. Well, interesting to see that there's the answer there. And we can roughly guess from the picture we've seen that that's minus two. And this number, I think it was three point something. Um, so we'll, we'll take a guess at minus two and mi sorry, minus would be minus three point, what did I write down? 3.7 or so it looks like. It's not going to be the right answer to that, but it's a, it's a nice little rough idea to have. Um, so we can test our answer by. So if you have that option, I always recommend to use it. Now, like I said, we don't actually need that because when we hear stationary point, the first thing we should be jumping to think of is differentiation, dy dx. So dy dx of this is what we're looking for. Now that's a, it's a hard-ish question. It's, um, it's a product rule. We'd have to break this into two parts because each of these parts have x's in them. So we can't do it as one um, thing. And one of those parts is an exponential. So you need to know how to differentiate that. So let's uh, do the product rule. Product rule, let's differentiate the first one. We'll get five and multiply that by the second part left alone. So e to the half of x. This is your product rule. You'll be given this as a formula, so feel free to use the formula. People put u and v. But um, it's easy enough to remember the product rule. One of them left alone, the other differentiate. That's what I've done here. And then add and do the other way around. So we're going to leave this one alone. We got 5x. And now we're going to differentiate this second one here. Now exponentials are quite easy to differentiate. We just leave them alone. Um, at least when it's just x up here. So if this was just x, e to the power of x, differentiated, uh, differentiated that is still equal to e to the power of x. But it's not quite e to the power of x, there's a half here. So we use the chain rule. So e to the, so e to the power of a half x differentiated is this multiplied by a half. That half came from here. It's the derivative of what was up here. Either way, you, you'll probably be able to do that, maybe a little slower than I did, but either way, you should get out roughly this. Now, we can clean all this up. Let's uh, put this together. Let me put it together up here. I'll squeeze it in. Um, we get 5 here, plus from this one, we would get 5 over 2x, um, 5 over 2x, and that both of them have e to a half x on them. So this is just this one cleaned up. And remember what we know about stationary points. The derivative is equal to zero. The derivative is equal to zero. So this, we can already solve this. This is not too difficult. We have two things multiplied here. Two answers we'd get. Let's split it into half here. One answer would be five plus five over two x equals zero. Let's go ahead and solve this now. Uh, five over two x equals minus five. Um, x is equal, let's see, two times minus five is minus 10. Uh, divided by 5. So x is equal to minus 2. That's good because our picture said we'd get minus 2. And let's do the other one first. You might already see a problem with this one. e to the power of a half x equals 0. Um, so we could use the natural log to try and do this. Natural log of both sides. Natural log of e disappears. So we just get a half x is equal to natural log of 0. There's your problem. The calculator will tell you that's an error. And um, more accurately, I guess it, it approaches m in minus infinity. 
So this actually does tell us something useful. It just won't give us an answer. In this case, we'll just say nothing about. Well, no, let me draw. I'll roughly draw this here. Uh, this is what the exponential looks like. A curve like this. So when is uh, this equal to zero? Well, here's the zero line. Y equals zero here. It never actually equals zero. It gets really, 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 really close. The closer X gets to minus infinity. And that's, it. that's interesting because remember what we're doing here. The derivative is equal to zero. We're finding out when it's flat. When it's a flat slope. And if you look at this, it is flat over here. Or if you look at the graph we did at the start. It does become, yeah, forget about this being flat. This is the important one being flat. When this approaches minus infinity, it's starting to approach flatness. So that's why we get this answer out. It's not useful for this exam, though. They're not interested in this. But maybe you could get away with giving an answer the exact coordinates that this is a um, stationary point. One of the answers might be minus infinity... Um, minus infinity zero but no that's it's not a stationary point it's, it's very close to one it approaches one but unfortunately that's not a stationary point and i guess you could argue it's not exact either minus infinity is not exact anyway that's not the answer you're looking for this one here is x is equal minus two but they still want y they wanted the coordinates so let me make a bit of room here they wanted x and y they want this coordinates here we now know minus two, my guess was right. We want the exact answer for this one here. Uh, where do we get that? Well, here's y right here. All I need is y. y is equal five, multiplied by x. Well, x is minus two. Multiplied by e to the power of a half times minus two. Uh, let me clear this out of the way. So that's what y is equal to. We can clean this up a lot. We get minus 10 e to the power of a half times minus two is minus one. Well, that's an answer. That's already an answer. Um, or we could leave that as minus 10 over e. Either of these are fine. Um, you could put that in a calculator and get an answer. The answer would be about 3 point something, 3.7. But that's not an exact answer. This is an exact answer, either of these. These are exact answers. That's why they had the word exact in the question. So you need to leave this. If you wrote, if you put this in a calculator, and I, I don't know what the number will come out as a 3.71, let's say. Even if this is correct, which is, it's probably not, I haven't checked in the calculator, they would take a mark away because you misread the question. You, re, you misread exact. They want this. They rather this than this. Okay, I hope that answers um, that question. If you have any follow-up questions, if you're confused by anything, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer you.